Hi, and welcome back to School of Block. Today's video is about identity solutions. I'm going to talk about some problems with our current system of physical and digital identity and how those might be mitigated with an identity system based on the blockchain. So what kinds of things do we use identity for in real life? Just about everything from driving to voting to traveling to credit to housing to business and so much more. But these systems are not nearly ideal, having to carry around and store paper identification. I was in Arizona a while back and the police were trying to take me in, even though I had not committed a crime, but simply because I did not have a physical copy of my ID on my person and they had no way to be certain that I was who I claimed to be. Also, recently, I had to drive three hours to the passport agency to update my passport and they almost rejected me because the paperwork I had mailed in previously was halfway across the country where no one could get it and they weren't able to locate the proper documentation. But availability is not even the worst of our problems. There's also the problem of fraud. Trillions of dollars are wasted every year because of fraud. People can impersonate you or create a fake ID very easily. Websites also get hacked all the time. Then your information is auctioned off and someone uses it to pretend that they are you for financial gain. On top of all these problems, we have silos of information everywhere. Our systems were not set up to share information between many different parts of government and contractors and individuals interacting with the same data. Every government agency has different requirements. Every company, every person has to go a different place to get a different piece of paperwork. People have to fill out the same information over and over and over again, sometimes multiple times at the same agencies. Why isn't there just one place where our identities, which is so personal and unique to each of us, could live? There is also the problem of oversharing of information. The common example here is where someone asks you for your license or passport to prove your age to buy something like alcohol. All they really need to know is if you are old enough, in other words, yes or no. They do not need to know your exact birth date even, but the document reveals so much more about you. What if you could just cryptographically prove that you are over a certain age without sharing any additional information? Private companies tried to solve some of these problems online through federated identities where you can prove yourself once through logging into Google or Facebook, etc., and then they give you access to other apps and services. The problem there is that they own your data. This system puts the burden of security on every single organization that has your personal data to keep it secure. And not surprisingly, most of them do not even have experts in security in charge of the decision making when it comes to how our data is stored and used. Many of them use arbitrary measures for security and privacy. How can we trust Equifax, Facebook, and other centralized systems to keep our data secure? They freely share data with trusted third parties. We never even know where it is or where it's going to go. Our system is archaic and we need a better solution. We need a way to maintain privacy and ownership of our digital and personal identities in a system that is set up for the age that we live in. What does that mean? We can use a system that puts our IDs and personal documents on a blockchain. Your information and documents would be encrypted and stored on a permissioned blockchain ready for you to access or grant permission to at any time. For example, your social security number, voter registration, business documents, personal photo, driver's license, etc. This comes with increased privacy because you can just share the credentials that are necessary and just for the amount of time that you specify and safely store the rest. This is a concept called self-sovereign identity, where you can control your own personal identity and information and don't have to request access to that information from anyone like a government agency or company. These systems can help prevent fraud and make sure that everyone has an accessible ID. There are many examples of these types of systems that have popped up over the last few years. But the most well-known one is Hyperledger. Hyperledger falls under the Linux Foundation and houses many blockchain projects, including three that are focusing on solving the identity problem. Hyperledger Indy was donated by the company Evernim in 2018 to the Linux Foundation. 
Now, Evernim is also the same company that created the first public blockchain for identity solutions called Sovereign, and has done a lot of work and research in the blockchain identity space. Hyperledger Indie was created to make a modular system of composable pre-built components to solve common identity needs for governments and organizations. Hyperledger Ursa came later that same year to fill the need for a shared cryptography library and standards for the other Hyperledger projects, including Hyperledger Indie. The latest of the three, Hyperledger Ares, is from this year, 2019, and came out of a Hyperledger Indie project enhancement to be its own project, still interoperable with Hyperledger Indie. Its purpose is to create a shared, reusable, interoperable tool for the exchange of verifiable credentials across systems and networks. If you would like more information on this identity stack, then I recommend you start with Hyperledger Indie's demo about Alice and Faber College. You can find a link to that demo in the description below. Before I conclude, I would like to give you some examples of how these identity solutions are being used in the real world. The government of British Columbia is using this technology as a business registry right now. They also have invested in these hyperledger projects and are expected to expand the scope of blockchain identity systems being used throughout Canada soon. Aid groups that service refugee camps are also benefiting from blockchain identity solutions. For example, organizations like the Red Cross are saving millions of dollars by verifying people's identities through a hashed photo of refugee irises stored on the blockchain. This prevents gangs from stealing food and supplies at refugee camps and making sure everybody gets their allotment, making the system safer and more fair. Blockchain organizations are currently exploring land registry solutions in developing countries. In Latin America, Africa, and parts of Asia, there are organizations trying to document all land ownership on blockchains. This can prevent theft and government overreach in places that lack strong regulation. There are many other players in the blockchain identity space now. Many companies and startups are realizing the importance of these systems. If you know of any that you think are promising, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this content, please subscribe, like and share the video, and leave suggestions for topics that you would like us to cover in the future. We also have a newsletter that you can find the link to in the description below. Have a great week.